we're here to talk about the winter from hell in 2018, Crypto Sopridium. <laughs> March 10th, and it was minus 40 with about four or five feet of snow on the ground. Southeast wind. We brought in D6 cat and payloaders and graders. We probably cleared about two football fields. And then we just started piling straw on there to try to get them babies warm and dry. It started, I just had a couple calves of scours and we never did scours. So that was a new thing, whatever, just the weather. The next day we got them tightened up. They were sucking the cow, everything was great. We had three little kids, so she was up at our place about three miles away. And then it was like seven, eight days I showed up and she was just like, what's going on? And I was like, we have a wreck. And then she came down and seen all the calves in the barn on IV. I think at that time we had lost maybe 10 or 20 at the time. You're just sitting around trying to figure out in your mind, what's the next step? Like, how are we gonna get through this? It was happening very quickly. So think of 37 calves in this barn on IV, all at different times. And you'd have to put a, a liter down every three hours. Talked about physically draining, mentally draining. Me and dad worked great together. We were so tired and depressed. My wife got in contact with a guy from the University of Calgary. And then he came down, grabbed some of the dead calves took them and they were testing them. The intestines were all black inside. They needed a live calf too, because we were bringing dead, you know, to get a biopsy. And that's when we knew we had crypto. The Diagnostic Services Unit, or DSU as we often refer to it, is a fee-for-service veterinary diagnostic lab. On site, we provide a number of services to complement a clinical diagnosis and to confirm that. We do this through um, necropsy examinations. We can take in tissues um, from veterinarians who have done postmortems out in the field. We also have a bacteriology lab here on site as well, um, which identifies bacterial causes of disease and importantly what antimicrobials or antibiotics those organisms are either susceptible to or resistant to. We have two different kinds of ways we can help. One way is with the diagnostics, but we also, being a vet school, we have lots of animal health experts who are veterinarians and specialists in various fields, and we can go out on farm Really understanding what's going on on farm definitely helps understand how the disease can move through those animals and help with management practices. The outbreak, by the time it's recognized and samples start coming in, there will be a couple of delays. It takes time to do these diagnostics, but we may be able to do things to prevent it from happening in subsequent years. Crypto's a parasite, so we're just creating a haven for that to spread. You know, just a tiny little speck of their poop touching the fresh baby that just hit the ground. The, the infection started that quick. It affects baby calves in six days. You think you're saving them, getting them ready to go and they're healthy. In six days, they were laying there ready to die. We had lots of neighbors and friends that offered their help, but we didn't want them here because finding out just the littlest fleck for them to take it back to their herd would be devastating for them. So there's no point in devastating the entire country with it. Like we were living and breathing this stuff for three weeks and my little eight-year-old boy ended up getting crypto. So I'd taken our son into the doctor to be tested or to f find out what was the problem. He couldn't stand, he was in fetal position because there was so much pain in his stomach. Enough's enough, we're done. Like. We're tired. They often occur at interfaces between animals and people. And so we need multiple different specialists and scientists to be looking at these problems in a very holistic way or 360 view so that veterinarians can implement changes in that herd to prevent further loss and further loss of animals. So it goes to animal health and welfare, but it also goes to preventing economic loss for the producer. The One Health Initiative is the understanding that human health, environmental health and animal health are all intricately connected and so we 
can no longer put each of those into a silo. Part of what my job is to do and, and my team's job is to do is to investigate illnesses when they occur in the population. We contact the individuals who are sick, we follow up and, and go through to certain exposures. And if we identify a cluster, then we'll help support the producer with strategies and management uh, techniques uh, to, to try and prevent additional transmission. Don't concentrate on everything on one vet. Spread it around, get the word out there, get some other vets to come and help. And the cows alone was probably 150, $160,000 gone. And the vet bills were 16, dollars $18,000. So if we could save the ones that weren't born yet on clean ground, away from everything, different water source, like we didn't know where it was coming from or how we got it or what, what to do. Anything three weeks old, they never did get crypto. So we kicked them out east into the summer pasture and then managed about 200 calves of that same age. And we kept them in the calving field. And fed them in different groups to try and manage that infection wouldn't spread. You're definitely more aware and our kids are aware of it as well. So visiting friends, if you're gonna go into the barns, put their boots on. They've got boots for school and boots for the barns here at home. We've dropped our calving back to April. They calve on grass. They're nothing but bouncing. They calve and they're gone. They're healthy and we've lost zero weight. Don't be afraid to talk about it. If you are going through something, it doesn't mean that you need to be ashamed. You should be talking about it because somebody somewhere has went through it and they're going to know someone who can help you.